Martha has been memorialized in sacred scripture in, in several ways. And the most well-known way, of course, is in the, in the way that she is juxtaposed with St. Mary uh, in terms of Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to him in a, court of, in a contemplative way, and, and Martha busy about the housework and upset because Mary is not helping her to the point that our Lord corrected her by saying, Martha, Martha, you are busy about many things, but only one thing is necessary, and Mary has chosen the better part. So we've, got, we've gotten to the point where we, we talk about you know, people who are Martha and people who are Mary as a, as a kind of iconic way of speaking about the contemplative and active life, and, uh, and, and Mary has chosen the better part. And Martha is, is busy about many things. So we've kind of remembered Martha in a, in a, in a negative way uh, because of her, her defect in, in that particular respect at that particular time. But we also have recorded for us this passage of St. John's Gospel, which is a sort of continuation of, of that pattern because... We hear how when Jesus comes to Bethany that both Martha and Mary hear about his arrival. But Martha, Mary stays at home, the contemplative. She stays back at home and continues to weep while Martha, as soon as she hears that our Lord has arrived, she runs out and she goes out to meet our Lord. So she takes this active role in going to find our Lord. And yet there's nothing wrong with this. You know, It is, in fact, um, a tremendous active faith on her part because when she finds our Lord she directly engages with him in this act of faith by professing her faith that if our Lord had been there that, that Lazarus wouldn't have died and that even now after he had been dead for four days in the tomb she knew that whatever he asked God would give him she didn't even ask for a particular thing. She didn't ask that our Lord should raise Lazarus from the dead. But she made this act of trust. Obviously, Martha and Mary were devastated by the death of their brother. And it seems as though Martha sort of expected our Lord to have done something about it. And yet, she didn't go so far as to complain. She simply made this act of faith. She professed her faith that if he had been there, he wouldn't have died and that whatever he asked of God would be granted. So she made sort of an indirect suggestion of what she would hope he would do, but she, she left it in his hands. And then later, Mary comes as well out to see our Lord, but it's Martha that takes this initiative, and, and this active initiative on Martha's part is not contrary to the contemplative life, uh, nor is it, is it contrary to that kind of action which is pleasing to God. The fact of the matter is uh, that we have to be both contemplative and active and we have to remain in the presence of God and depend upon his grace and pray as though, as we say, as the cliche goes, pray as though everything depended on God but we have to work as though everything depended on us. And that's a real tension in anyone's life, there is a primacy to the life of prayer. Prayer should come before everything else because God comes before everything else. But depending on our state in life, the way that we actually apply that principle is going to be different. As priests and religious, you know, we have a structure that, that, that makes sure that prayer comes, comes really first in our, in our religious life because that is absolutely essential to our being able to live, live our vocation. But people who live in the world, who have families, uh, who have jobs, have to organize their lives in, in different, different ways. 
the, the fact of the matter is there's always going to be a tension uh, for those who are following the path that our Lord has set out for them, there's going to be a need to remain in prayer. And in those who are making progress, even a desire to remain in prayer. And yet, at the same time, we can't neglect our duties or, or make prayer a substitute for, for taking care of our families or being at home when we need to be at home and taking care of those who are in need and just doing what we're supposed to do. Um, and, and yet we, we will always have the temptation also of becoming activists, of, of drowning ourselves in activities and distractions and preoccupations because we don't want to look inside or because prayer has become difficult. We find it difficult to pray. It's dry. It's not rewarding. God seems to be far away. We'd rather do anything but pray. So there's always going to be this tension, and that's a sign actually of health if the tension goes away, uh, it's probably because we've neglected our prayer life in some way uh, and have uh, become activists. So it's always going to be a struggle for us. So we should look to St. Martha not as a, an icon of, of a mistake in the spiritual life, but as someone who, who struggled, as everyone did, as everyone does. And in, this, in her particular case, she was... Uh, victorious. God was pleased with her act of faith. She professed her faith uh, in his divinity. She said, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. That was an act of faith. That was a contemplative intuition. Uh, and it was a reward for her efforts. So all of us, even if it's a matter of prayer, have to make active efforts at at becoming better at it. We have to set aside time. We have to set aside a place. We have to try to quiet ourselves. We have to try to overcome our distractions. And that's never easy. But it's a, it's a fight, fight worth fighting because in the end it draws us closer to the Lord and allows us to deepen our faith and commit ourselves more perfectly to his love and to his kingdom. So while Martha was corrected by our Lord because she was busy about many things. She was also rewarded for her great faith when our Lord came to her and bore witness to his divinity by raising Lazarus from the dead. May he also raise us from our mortal way of life to a new life of grace and perfection uh, in his uh, saving power that rose Lazarus from the dead and himself raised himself up from the dead and raises us up to new life.